Hello everyone, my name is Denasa with Action VFX. In today's tutorial, we will be learning how to do the Scarlet Witch energy ball effects as you can see in this shot. This tutorial will be focused on getting the energy ball effects. We will learn how to composite Action VFX energy ball elements and combine them with After Effects lightning effects to create this magical energy look. We will learn about how to use time displacement to get a swirly ball effects as well as creating light wraps to help blend your elements together. And then, to elevate the shot more, we will also add Action VFX Anamorphic Lens Flare and Energy Burst elements to the shot. You can get all the effects elements that I'm using in this tutorial on Action VFX website. So, you can check that out. Anyway, we are going to cover a lot of stuff in this tutorial, so let's get started. So, this is our plate. The first thing we are going to do is to track the hands. Because that's where all the VFX is going to happen. So we want to create three nulls, name them right hand, left hand, and middle. And then what I did is I color code them so we can easily tell which null is which. These trackers are gonna be crucial to basically everything we do. So put these trackers accordingly. The right null to the right hand, the left null to the left hand, and the middle to the middle in between the right and the left hand. So basically, the middle null is where we will put our main energy ball. And the right and left hand nulls are where we will attach the lightning effects. So, you are going to need to track the right and left hand nulls to the hands. You can do this manually, which what I did. Since this tutorial will be more focused on making the energy effects, I will not focus too much here on the tracking. So, if you want to skip the tracking, you could always download the free plate and the After Effects project files in the description, and within the project files, you will have all the nulls already tracked. So, you can go from there. Okay, so for the middle null, since there is nothing to track, you can just animate by eye of where you want the energy ball will be. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can always fix it anytime. Okay, so once it's all done, you want to drop in your energy ball elements that you are going to use. For me, I'm using energy ball 3, 5, and 11. And then, because the energy balls are animated, you want to readjust the timing. After that, you want to pattern them into the middle nulls so it will follow the middle nulls movement. And then here, I just rearrange my layers a little bit. It doesn't really matter. But it's always nice to have things in order. And then you want to adjust the transform of each of these energy balls to fit your liking. Adjust your scale, the position. And then what I also did is I used time remapping to adjust the animation of the energy ball to make it move a little bit faster. And then what I also did is I adjusted the scale on the middle node to make the energy ball basically get smaller when she closes her hand. Okay, so once you have the energy parented and adjusted, the next part is to do the lightning effects. So first, what you want to do is create a new solid, name it right lightning core. So basically, to do these effects, we are going to have two separate lightning layers for each left and right hand the core lightning and the glow lightning, so we have four in total. So we put in the advanced lightning effects to the right lightning core that we have here and change the lightning type to two-way strike. Change the conductivity to 6.7, core radius to 3, turn off the glow opacity to 0, turbulence to 2.75, forking to 100%, and decay to 0.12. And then, in Expert Settings, change Complexity to 3, Fork Distance to 29, Fractal to Spline, Core Drain to 51, Fork Strength to 56, and Variation to 18. And then, you want to Alt-click on the Origin and pick the Pick Whip, and pan it to the right hand null. And then, for the Direction, you want to Pick Whip it to the middle null. Add fast blur for just one pixel and add turbulence displays with amount of 37 and size 7. 
Next, duplicate the lightning core and rename it lightning glow. And then change glow opacity to 60, radius to 32, change the color to mimic the energy ball's color, change the decay to 0, turbulent displays to 1 to 4, and then don't forget to turn off the core opacity to 0. And then change the transform mode of the layer to screen. Then duplicate it and rename the new ones for the left hand. Then go to the origins of the new ones and reparent them to the left hand null instead of the right hand null. And now we have our lightning. Now we want to make the energy look more dynamic. So what I did is I pre-composed one of the energy ball, which is energy ball 11. And then I want to rotate it. I want it to rotate. So I create a null and name it pivot. And as you can see, based on the pivot null, the energy is not centered to the shot. So press A and adjust the anchor point to make it centered to the comp. And then we animate the null to rotate by alt clicking the rotation and X expression time times minus 150. Next, you parent the energy to the pivot. And now it rotates. And then you want to add adjustment layer, name it time displacement, and then add time displacement effects. Now you can see the energy looks weird. That's because we have the layer displacement map set to itself. So what we want to do now is to turn it off for a second and then create a new solid, name it ramp, and then add gradient ramp effects. Set the ramp shape to radial, swap the colors, and then adjust the start and end of the ramp to have a gradient circle in the middle of the shot. And then we go back to the displacement layer, turn it on, and change the map layer to ramp and source to effects and mask. And now we have this fun swirly effect. So what happening here is the displacement map displays the scene's pixels in time based on the ramp's color. Everything the bright color touches would be a few frames forward and everything the dark color touches is a few frames behind. So, what I did later is adjust the color of the ramp. And then back on time displays, I changed the max time to 0.2 and time resolution to 180. And now it looks better. But our scene is now pixelated. That is fine. Just add a radial blur and change it to straight zoom and set the amount to 10. And now we're good to go. Another thing I did is I created a mask around the energy so I can reduce the edges length so it fits to the scene later. So now let's see what this energy ball looks like now in the main comp. So let's go to our main comp. So lower energy ball and the plate. And there's our rotating energy ball. What I also did was to apply this effect to another energy ball layer. So I pick energy ball 3, pre-comp it and just basically copy paste the effect from the previous energy ball to this one. Once that's done, back in the main comp, you might want to readjust the ball size and position because it has changed due to the effects that we have applied. Then you might want to turn this energy ball to 3D layer and rotate it in the Y axis slightly. That way, the energy rotation will look less two dimensional. And then what you want to do next is pre-comp everything. Name it energy ball main, and now we have everything nested to a new comp. The problem is, we want the plate inside the pre-comp as a guide, but we don't want the plate to be rendered outside of the comp. So to do that, we go inside the pre-comp and change the back plate inside the pre-comp to guide layer. And now the plate is not rendered outside the pre-comp. Nice! But now, because the plate and the nulls are inside the pre-comp, now it's missing in the main comp. So what you want to do is copy them all into the main comp and then on the plate, disable the guide layer. So now we have the plate and the nulls back in the main comp. So now we want to colorize the energy. Thankfully, everything is now grouped so we can just color the pre-comp. So let's add curve, lower the midtones to make the color a little bit more pronounced. And then add glow and set the threshold to 68. And then set the radius very high, like 800. Now, the glow is more spread out. Then, add hue and saturation, click colorize, and set the saturation very high. And now we have a nice red energy. 
And then to make it more blend in, change the transform mode to screen, and there you go. Next, what you want to do is rotate the hand. The energy ball is supposed to be behind the hand. So, there are so many ways to roto, but what I do, I usually create a separate solid layer named roto mat, where I will do all my roto. I do this so if I ever need to move the roto around or copy it somewhere, I could just grab the layer. And then we can start rotoscoping. Once the roto is done, I could just take my energy ball below the roto, change the mat to luma inverted. And now the masking is applied to the energy ball. Of course, as you can see, the roto is still rough. To fix that, we can just add fast blur to the layer. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is going to add light from the energy leaking into the fingers or light wrap. So to create a light wrap, create a new solid and name it light wrap. And then add set channel and set all the source layer to our energy ball and effects and mask. Now, if we solo this, this solid has become an, the identical copy of the energy ball layer. Next, we're gonna set matte, set it to our roto, and also set effects and mask. Then click on invert layer, and now we have this. Then we want to blur it like 10 pixel. Then duplicate the set matte, bring it to the bottom, and then uncheck the invert. Now, the excess of that fast blur is now trapped inside the matte simulating a light leaking to the fingers. Then set the transfer mode to screen and now our shot blends in better thanks to the light wrap. For this next part, I'm going to skim over very quickly. But what I did essentially is I used Action VFX Anamorphic Lens Flare to add the illusion of energy hotspot on her hands and the energy core. I simply just add the lens flares position them accordingly, and parent them to the appropriate nulls, the right-hand nulls, the middle nulls, the left-hand nulls. And then I rotoscope the lens flare to limit the artifacts glow, just to make it a little nicer. And then I color correct them using hue and saturation to, look, make, it, to make it look red. And then I animate the opacity alongside the energy ball comp and made it fade out as she closes her hand. And then we want to make sure the lens flare is rotated behind the hand. So here, I just copied the roto mat and then I extended the roto a little bit because the glow artifacts is leaking through the hand. And now this is what we have. Awesome. Next, to add more life to the energy ball, I'm going to add a smoke trail effects using Action VFX energy burst elements. So, first to do that, we are going to drop our energy burst elements to the comp. I am using energy burst side 4, 5, and 6. Now, we are going to arrange them to make them look like a smoke exhaust trail coming out of the energy ball. I use this energy burst side 4. Adjust the timing a little bit to find a frame where the smoke looks more dissolved and spread out. And then placed it on top of the energy ball in a way to make the burst direction looks like it's an exhaust smoke from the energy ball. And then, you want to roto the beginning part of the element and feather it out, so now it looks like it's emitting from the ball. I animated the roto mask a little bit to follow with the ball movement, and then changed the transform mode to screen. And then you want to do the same with the other energy bursts. Like for example, now the ball goes up, I put this energy and rotate it downwards. And then after everything is lined up, you want to play with the individual opacity to make the smoke bursts fade out so it doesn't stay visible forever. Okay, once you're done, pre comp the energy burst smoke and then color it. First, change the comp into screen and add a hue and saturation. Set it to color I select before, but now we have a white highlight on our smoke. So to get rid of that, add a tint, change the white color to basically the closest to the original blue color. I've added some blur, and now you have it. Next, I want the smoke burst to be tracked into the scene. 
So I motion track this pole behind her and then use the track information to track our smoke into the scene. Great! Now, we want to add some energy glow to help blend the scene together. Once again, I will be very brief on this, but it is very simple. All I did was just creating adjustment layers and then added some red curves on them, mask out the area where I want the glow to be. So I created one big glow for the overall glow, and then I also added another glow on the face with an addition of After Effects glow effects. And then I also add glow on the hand. Awesome! Now, finally we are going to add a displacement noise to the energy ball to make it look more powerful. So first what you want to do, you want to create a new solid, name it Fractal. And then you want to add Fractal Noise. And then you want to set the Fractal Type to Max, and the Contrast to 190, and then the Scale to 55. And then for the Evolution, you want to Alt-click and add Expression Time times 250. And then you want to add a Fast Blur to blur the Fractal. And then you want to create an Adjustment Layer, and then and name it displacement map and then add the displacement map effect and then set the target to the fractal layer and you have this noise and then the next thing you're going to do is you want to roto the fractal layer because we want the noise to only happening around the energy ball animate it to follow the energy ball and there we go okay so now this is our shot one last thing, as an icing on the cake, I'm going to add a spell hits element which you can get for free on Action VFX website and color it red and put it at the end when our hand closes. So now we have this magic smoke effect as the energy dissipates and it just makes it more powerful. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you want to let us know for any tutorial you'd like to see next. We will be releasing tutorials every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And that's it from me, see you next time.